episode 6 of my vlog, and this one's going to be a bit weird because it's not so much as me asking what you think of something, but more along the lines of, I felt like I should do one of these to archive out how Trump won exactly, that way, in hopes in the future at some point, maybe somebody will watch this and be like, okay, so that's what happened, and that's how it happened, alright, so basically, this is going to be a long one, alright, so Get yourselves a popcorn because here we here we go. All right, let's start off with the founding of the United States and the origins of each of the parties. Our founding fathers had decided to that the average American person was a dumb redneck hick who would vote for basically anything, and so they basically set up something called the Electoral College. Basically, these are your electors. The electors will basically get your votes and then they would then decide who would win at this point. Literally you could vote for anybody who was running to be the president or really vote for anything because there wasn't really a set ballot system. You would go to these points and then you would basically vote. The votes would then be handed to the electors who would then take each of the votes and then they would pick who they want to vote for. These electors would be basically appointed by Mayors, because the mayors, uh, brothers of presidents, you know, whoever is happening to be handy enough to grab to be fulfilling the role of the elector. Okay? Then, basically, at some point, then voting districts was added. The voting districts would basically be how the United States would be divided up by voting districts. That's why some states are called Democrats and some states are called Republicans or red or blue, you know, whoever you're watching would basically call it that. These voting districts are basically drawn by our government. <laughs> so, basically, that votes cast by voting districts and basically it just rounds it off rather than have to count every single last solitary vote. Alright then, basically what caused the creation of the Republican Democratic Party. Basically the Republican Democratic Party was created during the time when slave labor was a very hot topic. The Democratic Party was originally the pro for slave labor. Alright, now before you say, you know, you're crazy, couldn't have been. Well, Let's just say the Democratic Party today is still very much has roots in its past at that point because basically the Democratic Party was the everybody who's rich club and still is pretty much who's rich club. Basically, these are the people that wants to basically use for money to basically own and buy everything. Use for money to basically erode your rights. Okay, <laughs> trust me, I'm going to be giving you exactly examples of how. It still is that way. The Republican Party was basically the form from the people was basically saying no to slave labor. That's why a lot of the good bills actually came out of the Republican Party. The Republican Party has lost its way a lot as in recent times. <coughs> the Republican Party back then was basically a uh, fair wage for the workers, workers, pro workers unions, pro basically everything that's good for the people that we as in American people. Need. That's our Republican Party when they talk about pretty much anything like Medicaid, Medicare, or whatever. They always want the bills to be drafted and done very, very, very well. Okay? Now then, let's jump forward to the election. Now that you know the origins of both the parties, the voting districts, and electors. Okay. <clears throat> now then, what the Democratic Party did. Okay, during the during the primaries, well, the, the big email league basically proved that the Democratic Party, a.k.a. Hillary Clinton's party, wants Hillary Clinton to win and to make sure that nobody else does win or even stands a prayer. The email league basically proved that, and then even they went so far as to during the primaries, some states, you know, to be exact, even Bernie Sanders' own town, their voting rights is basically purged so they could vote. Voters are already required to come in to vote for Bernie Sanders was even locked up from even voting for Bernie Sanders. The Democratic Party basically was forcing Hillary Clinton on us. That some run clear drove some voters, in fact a pretty good portion of voters basically is like, you don't tell us how to vote, we vote how we want to vote, basically went pro Trump. <laughs> Hillary Clinton went, Clinton went one step further and called Bernie supporters, Bernie voters, Bernie bros. Point blank insulting women supporters of Bernie Sanders. Guess what that did? That didn't sit well with them. They went pro-Trump. Of course. Some did go pro-Hillary, but 
pretty unfortunate to go pro Trump. And then we went even farther than that. Hillary Clinton then in the finals point blank called the Trump supporters. Basket of well, no point in me repeating what you said. You can actually look it up. Alright? Because I'm just basically highlighting it, okay? You basically insulted all of the Trump supporters, all the Trump voters, and guess what? They basically insulted voters in general, because Americans are Americans. Okay? So of course they went pro Trump. So Hillary Clinton basically insulted her own party voters. She insulted Donald Trump voters. And then of course, although they're running the smear campaign, her hardcore Hillary Clinton supporters kind of went and then repeated what she said, and then guess what? And Trump of course hit Trump supporters then fired back. Using hard and facts, which I'll be getting to the facts why Hillary Clinton actually shouldn't win at all in a bit, okay? All right. Basically, they then Trump supporters then fired back at Hillary Clinton, and so did Donald Trump. Okay. Then Hillary Clinton did, and the Democratic Party and the Hillary Clinton supporters went did the ultimate "put your full foot in your mouth" thing about how immigrants will have a hard time, women voters will have a hard time. Well, here's the major irony here: some facts that Trump could have actually used against Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Party was Donald Trump's campaign manager was a female. Donald Trump's first lady is having, who's now the first lady, is also having to be an immigrant. Quite a few YouTube channels actually predicted it even in the primary before anybody started dropping out that it was going to go down to Trump and Hillary and that Trump would inevitably win, which I'm going to be getting to that in a minute, why basically Hillary Clinton should have won. Things that Hillary Clinton were basically going to be doing, you know, what Trump even said was going to be stupid. Hillary Clinton's no fly zone was going to actually result in a full out, flat out war with, of all things, Russia. That's why Russia's actually celebrating right now because Trump won, because Hillary Clinton's no fly zone was actually going to start a war with them. Irony here is that Democratic Party saying that if Trump won, we were going to be at war right now. Well, guess what? Trump won. We're not at war. Go fit, right? The Democratic Party and Hillary Clinton supporters are going to say it will be hard enough for immigrants. Uh, the first place happened to be an immigrant. That's um, uh, let's see. Uh, called uh, Donald Trump a sexist and a pig and various other things, you know. Uh, let me see. Uh, this is president of his campaign was a woman. Okay. Now then, other things actually made it really hard for uh, Hillary Clinton couldn't really shake is she actually supported all of the bills that Donald Trump said he wouldn't didn't want to support and didn't really approve of. Very popular in bills that actually caused a lot of Americans work. Donald Trump spoke to the American workers. Hillary Clinton couldn't do that. Because Hillary Clinton supported every trade deal and he even wants to open up trade agreements with more tax evasion sanctuaries where people can hide their money to avoid paying taxes. Yeah, kind of hard to fire back at that, okay? Next thing, why Hillary Clinton? Uh, scandals. Let's start with a few scandals. Uh, private email server email leaks. Yeah. Don't want to make you look good there. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, Benghazi. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of things that we can actually people could actually use against Hillary Clinton actually didn't use against Hillary Clinton. Why like we should really vote for her. Or no, Verizon was the really the biggest one because everybody, heads of the armed forces, Donald Trump, a lot of people basically said that's a bad idea and that would start war. That's the biggest one. So really their biggest job was winning that. Also, unfortunately, for winning that no fly zone, unfortunately, for she will be a puppet to corporate America because her two biggest, their biggest campaign contributors were actually Boeing and Lockheed Martin. Look it up. Yeah, basically, Hillary Clinton ever since worked with a puppet of the Democratic Party, and that's why the Democratic Party locked Bernie Sanders out. Donald Trump's campaign, ironically, then fired back with the most brilliant thing we could have actually done. That was for actually took in what Hillary Clinton said, owned up to it, and fired back. I'm not that. I am. Donald Trump basically played. He is the outsider card to hit back at Hillary Clinton. Right now, it's a bad thing to be an insider into politics because basically a lot of Americans are out of work. And that that really hurts. The shadow employment is a lot worse than what they're actually admitting to. And Americans pay ain't that ain't as great as it needs to be. Key example of this is uh, state of Florida. 
average pay is $10.06 an hour, guess what? That's not the actual minimum wage in Florida. If you're above poverty, by the Federal Reserve, you're earning a dollar and eight cents an hour. That's effed up. Okay. Now then, he played the outsider. He basically played to the average workers. The Democratic Party, unfortunately, biggest family was that they were complacent. They thought that we had the wall of the Democratic states that will always vote Democrat no matter what. Well, guess what Trump did? Trump went and pulled your trousers down, went there and campaigned and got those states to vote for Trump. And then at the tail end, where was Donald Trump? Where was Donald Trump's campaigning? He only guess what he was. He was playing to the electors. <laughs> yeah, you played the he played the electors. He basically got the electors that can vote any which way they want. Because seriously, look at it. Some electors are actually allowed to basically take your votes and vote any way they want. In some in certain places, in other ones, it's actually they're required to vote for who they are intended to vote for. It's not everywhere. It was actually one vote per an American, and it's entirely likely that Hillary Clinton might have actually won, I guess, what the Electoral College that Trump actually spoke against in the past on his uh, online. Is who really put him in office, which, in every sense of the word, I'm actually grateful for, and in my opinion, everybody should be grateful for, because if Hillary Clinton had won, everything that the Democratic Party was saying that was going to happen was entirely likely going to happen. What I mean by what Democratic Party said that Trump would cause with Hillary Clinton would have actually happened. Look at her speeches. That's what that's what you need to do. You see the biggest thing that actually keeps putting bad presidents in office is simply put out this. The electoral cause in the two party system. Two party system is one needs to go flat out. The second thing that needs to change is people act it needs to be a lot easier for people to be informed as voters. They need to actually inform. They need to actually listen and not go because really the biggest problem is the people that goes, I'm a Democrat, I'm gonna vote Democrat. Or Republican, I'm gonna vote Republican. Regardless, completely ignoring what you're saying. I've actually met people like this. For real. I mean, granted, I was i I will admit I was actually one of the people that thought Obama was not gonna be a good president. Well he's done actually a few good things. Affordable Care Act, as much of a mess of a bill as it is, and needs to be a few billion words less and simplified in mean, every sense of the word. It really, really needs to be replaced with something else, something more simple, or something straightforward. We actually do have a solid medical medical bill that needs to be basically taken and expanded it on. It's called Medicaid and Medicare. Those are very solid plans that just need to be basically enhanced. They're very solid because they get medical care for people who can't work, which is a very huge portion of the American population. <laughs> All right, the Republican Party, if they went back to the roots that they were, they basically, you know, tax the rich heavily and then very lightly tax everybody else would be a huge help because that's what we need. Ironically, we had something of a resurgence of pro people. I want you to think about this. Actually, before you vote, Next time around, for the next major election, look into each of the parties, what they really stand for, before you go, I'm Democratic, I'm going to vote Democrat regardless. Look into the Democratic Party, look into the Republican Party, and go to LP.org. Be informed as a voter. And actually, look at the track record for what they are saying that they are for. Actually, check it out. You want to find the trickle-down economics. We've actually got a huge example now. The state actually tried it, and lo and behold, a complete disaster happened. He basically almost completely wiped out taxes and taxes on the rich and super taxed everybody else, and the city's economy basically imploded. And actually, for real, no joke. So get informed before next the pledge. And that way, maybe next time around, we'll actually get something different. And instead of wasting your ballot putting something silly like no faith, uh, vote, voting for Harambe or whoever, do a favor. Help break the two-party system. If you vote libertarian, if enough, people, if enough people votes libertarian, it will actually become a real party. Okay, and also instead of going, oh no, a complete disaster, and the presidential election is coming, you know, only like once a year, only once every now and then, you go practically because the presidential election comes up 
actually, what really floats is your life the most, believe it or not, is your local level voting. That's what actually influences you the most. Your mayor, who you vote as mayor, who you vote as city councilman, and all that. That actually influences your life the most. The president actually doesn't have as much influence as you think he does. Okay? Just like the president can only drive on very tightly controlled circumstances. Otherwise, he can't really drive. He, he can't even own an Android or an iPhone. He has to use a Blackberry. This is no joke. All right? All right? Look at up what the president can and can't do. You're going to be very much surprised. That's why, actually, in this case, what if Trump wasn't really a big deal? All right? Because lots of the people expect him to do, he actually doesn't have the power to do. Right, he actually can submit laws to Congress. Guess what? The Supreme Court has the final say. Is it actually constitutional? All right. So relax. All right, and to the people out there that's going crazy over Trump one Hillary Clinton loss and causing all the violence and the graffiti, stop it. That's not American. That's actually. In my, my opinion, that's actually a bad thing. That's criminal behavior. Graffiti is illegal. Attacking somebody because they voted for Trump is illegal. I think most of the Trump people is actually firing back and attacking the Clinton supporters. So let's bring that into that, okay? Thank you for watching.